.NET has been around for a lot of years now. Uh, I remember using it back in 2002 or 2003 in a long, long ago world. Uh, but because of that, there's a lot of applications out there that have been built on technologies like ASP.NET and web forms. Upgrading those can be pretty tricky work. Let's mash on that. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. I'm Dave Paquette, and today Simon Timms is talking to us about how to, I'm hoping, make it easier to upgrade older .NET projects. Mm -hmm. So this is a funny topic for you and I, I think, because when we first met and started working together on stuff, one of the things that we worked on was a book uh, mm. on published on like LeanPub or something on updating ASP.NET Web Forms applications. Uh, and this was like... 2008 or 9, something yeah, like that? Yeah, this was before .NET Core, so... Yeah, so we were ago. talking about how to get from full framework web forms to full framework MVC, not that they called it full framework back then. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were both working on separate projects for separate companies, but had a lot of the same problems, uh, so blocked a little bit about it. Um, and I have just run into a project that I helped create back around that same time frame uh, that is getting a little long in the tooth and needs some upgrade help to it. So it is a ASP Net MVC 5, I think, application built with such fun things as Enhibernate and uh, Post SHA, a lot of technologies that still exist in some shape or form, but are generally not part of the, the tool chain that I would use on a daily basis anymore. Um, so like all the web front end is a bunch of jQuery stuff. Uh, so I was looking for a way to upgrade this application and I have had a few failed attempts at it over the last three or four years trying to help people out, get it working a little bit better. Um, and I had been taking this kind of incremental approach of like, just try and fix this one little thing, just try and fix this one other little thing. Uh, and the the company that it's for came to me and said like, look, we are prepared to spend some actual money to upgrade this application. Uh, what can we do? So I went away and I found this fabulous idea here for how I can start working on upgrading the application. So the problem really is that although we have ASP.NET MVC in the before core world and the after core world, they have diverged quite heavily. So there's not a direct upgrade path to go from full framework to ASP.NET core. Uh, there's certainly like steps that you can take in there, but it's not going to be an easy path. And traditionally, I had just said to people, forget it, rewrite the whole thing. Uh, it's possible that you can grab some controller logic and move that over to new controller, but a lot of things have changed names, a lot of patterns have changed, configuration has changed, uh, a lot, basically. Uh, so what I have been looking at here is this incremental upgrade guide uh, and this is something that is enabled in Visual Studio through a plugin called the Upgrade Assistant. And the way that this is going to work is that it's basically going to inject a YARP proxy in front of your existing application. So what it looks like is basically we put a very thin application in front of the original application and for almost all the requests, we pass those through to the original backend application. So it is seamless to use uh, when you first install this because it looks like they're still using the same application. And in fact, they are using the same application that they were before, but it's just taking an extra hop through a proxy server. Uh, once we There's have, a name for this pattern, right? Um, yes, I think people might call this like a, a strangulation pattern. Uh, I'm not crazy about that because it seems very violent. So I'd have taken to call yeah, this a ship of Theseus approach to 
replacing <laughs> applications. I like so, that better. Yeah, so if people are not familiar with the ship of Theseus, it's this kind of hypothetical philosophical problem that comes up in first year university philosophy classes of uh, this fellow called Theseus has a ship and he sails it around, I guess, the Adriatic. And as he sails around, it undergoes a bunch of repairs. So the mast is repaired, the hull is repaired, the oars are replaced. Uh, so at some point along that path, does that ship cease to be the original ship of Theseus? And at what point does it cease to be that? Is there a specific point in time that you can say, well, as soon as you replace the mast, it's a new ship? Uh, and it's not really like a question that has a, a proper answer to it, but it's more of a, a thought experiment. And that's the same approach that we're taking here. So once we have shimmed this yacht proxy in front of the original application, we can start pulling bits of the application off. So for the application that I'm working on, there's a, a section around invoicing and the existing invoicing code is dreadfully slow to the point where listing all the invoices in the application takes 30 or 40 seconds to return. Uh, so what I ended up doing was shimming in this new ASP.NET Core application and having that run a query against the database, which is perfectly performant, uh, and retrieve the data. And so I have a separate URL now that sits in front of this one that people are redirected to inside of the application to see like these are the invoices. This is a much quicker way of retrieving them. Uh, so it still is streamlined in the original application, uh, but now they're using new functionality. And if I style the pages in the same way, it would be transparent to them. Um, there is support in here for doing authentication as well. So you install a little package into the existing .NET framework application. And so long as requests are authenticated against that one, they're authenticated against the, the proxy application too. So you can do all the, the necessary steps for authenticating and you don't lose any of that information as well. Um, so this is the approach that I'm going to be taking. I'm actually setting it up to have a single page application framework. So I'm going to use Vue for this one. Uh, and when they get into the website, they're going to end up on the original application until they click into specific sections and then when that section has been lit up in the, the new application, uh, we're going to start using that new application, which is serverless or sorry, not serverless, um, a spa and has much quicker API backends to it. Uh, so I'm losing some of the existing business logic, but that is intentionally done because that logic is super slow and we can make it a lot faster in the new core application. So I'm pretty keen on this approach and uh, I'm going to blog a little bit about this because it's fairly simple, but there have been a few gotchas mostly around what does this look like when you're deploying it out to Azure and trying to get it in front of an existing application. So you cool. can expect to see some yeah, more posts on this. I like this approach for sure. I'm really curious to see how it goes for you in this specific example. Yes. Yeah. So far, so good. We'll, we'll yeah. see in a couple of months' time if it ended up being a mistake or not, but it feels uh, like a really promising approach. Yeah, it's just, it's kind of a problem where there's no way to do it all at once. And like you said, you can't really just reuse all of your existing code and move it over to core, ASP.NET Core. So having this ability to run the two in parallel side by side within kind of what appears to be the same application is it's really a nice way to approach the problem yeah it allows some mixing and actually the the tooling uh, i don't have it open here we'll open it another episode it actually provides a, a little bit of a summary of like hey these are all the the existing endpoints in the existing system these are all the the new endpoints that are replacing them and you're 12 percent of the way done or 20 percent of the way done replacing the endpoints um, so for this application, I don't think we'll ever replace the entire application, uh, but certainly the hot paths that people use a lot, we want to move over. I don't know much about the tool, but I, I assume that when you implement your new, uh, 
functionality in the new framework. The old functionality is still there in the old one, unless you've already deleted it. And you mm -hmm. would have the ability to like switch back to the old one if the new one wasn't working. Yeah, way. you could do that. So it's plugin. because it's a, a proxy, it's actually URL based. So if you put in a controller that has the same path as a controller that exists in like the, the full framework application, the one in the core application is going to take precedence over that one. So that will be the one yep. that ends up getting used. So the idea is that if you have like a, a spa already built on top of a .NET Framework API, then you just replace the, the individual endpoint. And so long as the, the results and the inputs to those remain the same, then your spa should continue to work perfectly. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I say, more episodes coming up on this at some point in the near future, and we'll see how successful I've been. But for those of you out there watching, remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.